Good afternoon and welcome to the Indie in Office Hours. Uh, today our guest is Deltina Hay and she is going to help us understand microblogging. Charlotte is still out of town. She will be back next week and she will uh, see us through next week's topic. The show today is going to be pretty interesting because I had never really heard the term micro media before and how it's used to uh, power content. So it was a new thing for me. I understood the, uh, the reasons for it and everything, but it, it, I think you'll really find this interesting. Uh, Deltina has uh, deltinau.com, and that is a project that she has where she helps you learn uh, different aspects of social media. And then she's also the board chair for Independent Book Publishers Association, IBPA. And Deltina, could you explain uh, about yourself just a little bit more? Sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me, Laura. And I, I've been in publishing for about 10 years. My background is pretty diverse. It goes anywhere from accounting to applied mathematics to psychology. Um, but in the past seven years, I've written a number of books on social media, the mobile web, search optimization, and really find that mostly what I do now is teach on the topics. And, you know, I'm a programmer, you know, as well as a, as a marketer, you know, and so I, I, I teach uh, a lot about the tools, and that's really what I'm focusing on now. I used to do a lot of consulting for businesses, but now I'm just really enjoying teaching and being a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a grandma, too, and that is enjoyable. <laughs> um, well, I'd like to know, first of all, can you just give us a broad overview of micromedia? And uh, then we'll discuss how it can uh, be used in um, your writing and publishing business. Sure. Um, what I consider micromedia is sharing small bits of content, uh, whether it is a short um, excerpt of text or an image or a video or a link, resource, or even a quote. Um, you know, beyond that, the sharing itself, uh, the other thing that I like to stress is that to make the content that you produce, say, on your own website or wherever you produce and, and publish the content, also very shareable as far as making it easy for other people to share those little bits of micromedia from your site. And so it's, it's a, not as much about the creating... Um, new places to share as it is about creating a larger audience or reaching a larger audience because micromedia allows you to go out and post to some sites that ordinarily you may not have posted to and to reach an audience that you may not have or reached in the past. Do you find that it's helpful with like the uh, um, I guess I could I could say smaller social media sites just like Instagram and things like that, do you find it, it helps develop those a little more? Because that's a piece that I am certainly missing. I mean, I, I do well with, of course, Google+, Plus, but Twitter and um, Pinterest, but the Instagram, mm -hmm. and there was another one I was looking into, but those those smaller pieces I certainly miss. Yeah, I think that, that thinking in terms of micromedia and sharing these smaller bits of content really does help you kind of get your head around Instagram. Um, I, I encourage people first to start with um, content that they already have. We, we might talk about that in a minute. But as far as thinking, thinking small, and you know, this is one of, the, one of the questions that I posed to the IBPA panel that I taught at the last PubU. And I posted a link to the slides, I believe, on the page to that so people can take a look at, at the slides from that presentation. But as far as really thinking about what you can do and say and say uh, an Instagram video like 15 seconds or 6 seconds and right. you know creating contests for, for maybe you know reviews in 15 seconds so people can do video reviews and and whether or not you can explain or do a book trailer in 15 seconds you know they used to say in the old days that if you can explain your business in 10 seconds you know with your elevator pitch that you you know, then you needed to work on it. So this is a good exercise in that. But also it's about real time and whether or not things like sharing images real time and Instagram really is relevant to what you're doing. 
if you're out there doing a lot of presentations or events and book signings and that sort of thing, then you really need to be embracing Instagram and really taking advantage of that of that uh, real time. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that, and that's a, that's um. I, I think that I don't know if it's because it's so new new or if it's just my circle of friends don't use it as much, but that's a piece I'm missing that I have to develop. Uh, can you would you also suggest like taking quotes um out of that content, like making those uh, memes with them mm -hmm. as part of yeah. the way to the content? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one one of the things, like I said, is is you know, not to really think of micromedia necessarily as having to create brand new content. Let's say you have a blog post and you have some really good quotes or lines within that blog post. If you take that and you create, say, like a Tumblr account or a WordPress.com account. Now, notice that I say WordPress.com. I'm not talking about your own um, hosted website on WordPress.org. But WordPress.com, which has turned into what Tumblr was originally, which is called a tumble log, okay, where it really is kind of a streaming, a constant streaming of shorter bits of content, be it a quote or an image or a video or, you know, just any, any sort of a small um, excerpt or whatever you can take from your existing content. And that's actually what those platforms are there for. And so save that really beefy you know, optimize content for your website and then take little bits of it and go out to these other micromedia sites uh, to share them. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about using uh, WordPress.org like that before. Or WordPress.com. I mean, dot .com. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, for yeah. It's, it's, that it's hard. That people, it's hard for people to... <laughs> yeah, it, if some people don't even realize there's a difference. Oh, wait, what's WordPress.com? Well, the really nice thing about WordPress.com and Tumblr is that they're actually communities within themselves. So they're communities of bloggers. And so you actually can get exposure to people who never would have stumbled upon your website, you know, through using, you know, those other those other micro-publishing areas. Yeah, that's interesting because I, ha I have a... Uh WordPress.com site. That's uh, that's when I was telling the green room that I don't do anything with anymore. So I'll just start using that again and then repurpose that content back out. Mm -hmm. Right, right. See, I'm learning yeah. something as we go. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is learn things. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, one of the things that that I really want to stress, and I want to make certain that I say, you know, before before we get off on any other topic, is that you really want to be prepared. Uh, really when you're posting any kind of topic online or publishing um, content online, I'm sorry, is especially as far as number one, do your keyword research before you do any kind of major campaign. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When you go, like you use the Google AdWords tool and you gather up like your 20 very best keywords and they're long tail keywords, the things that that don't have a lot of competition out there that are applicable to your content, your book, your product, whatever. And you have those keywords that you're using every time you go out there to all of these different micromedia sites, whenever you put content on your website, whenever you put um, um, descriptions for your books and, you know, Amazon and so on and so forth. And then the other way that you want to make certain that you're prepared is that um, Pinterest is another great um, micromedia site that I consider micromedia because it's pretty easy to pin an image. Right, it's a little little bit of content, but you want to make certain that when you create a Pinterest account, that you create a business account, and that you link it to your website, because then you can use uh, this great tool called Rich Pins, where you can mark up the content on your website, so that when people pin things from your website then there's actually is going to be a link within that pin or within that image that goes back to your site. And so being prepared means that, that whatever you're putting up there, whatever bit of uh, micromedia you're putting up there, is always going to be able to come back to your content somehow. I would think, too, since you're, it, obviously this would take some time and effort on your part, which none of us have enough of, right? <laughs> so I would think that it would be, really important too to sit down like you said when you do your keywording research is really nail down what your purpose is 
and what you're trying to do so that you everything is streamlined and you're not getting absolutely a information out there so if you're trying to promote promote one particular project make sure everything has a connection to that because that I know I, I know a lot of people um, have trouble with social media because of that they have trouble defining what they're trying to do and they think of it as a like a social site instead of a, a business a vehicle for your business you know so I think that that's mm -hmm. that's a uh, really important but I agree with that keywording research. A lot of people shy away from those things. They think that only the techies and the uh, digital marketers um, have access to those tools. But th those are free tools that you can use, and it's not hard to learn them. Read a couple of blog posts about them, and you honestly get enough information uh -huh. that you can use them, you know, well enough in your uh, business. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the tools are free, and really knowing how to apply them, you don't need to know too many details. You just need to be able to gather up as much information about your book or whatever, and you know, create a web page for it, and then have you know, Google AdWords tool come and look at that content and make some suggestions. And then you can you know, start your list from there. And then, yeah, absolutely agree. And so glad you brought that up about knowing what your goals are. And that's part of what you know. What I teach as far as strategy, that's the very first thing you need to do. Some people just say, "Okay, now I got to go on on social media. I'll just start throwing stuff out there." But you really need to slow down and say, "Okay, what are my goals? Do I want to sell books? Do I want to establish myself as a thought leader? You know, do I do I want to drive traffic to my website? You know, all of the above, so that whatever you're doing, you know, your you know what your efforts are being applied to, what your ultimate goals are, and that those goals are measurable." And so the same thing with you know going out to these smaller places, uh, these smaller micromedia sites. Again, if you're always making certain that you are coming back to your website, then you can measure that. You know, you can use Google Analytics or whatever to see. Oh wow, I'm getting you know this many hits from WordPress.com. This is great. You know, or you know people are coming back from this particular infographic pin that I shared back to my website. So you really know what's working instead of just going out there blind. Well, I've said many a times on the writing biz and also on this show to use Pinterest as a research tool for your writing projects. And that's another place is in that research that you could repurpose content out um, for the projects that you're trying to uh, market at that time. You know, little statistics or blurbs or con quotes by other people. Uh -huh. I mean, there's a lot of things that you could use there. So I think it would be very I, th I think that it would be well worth the time to sit back and look at what you have available to you now and uh, decide what you can redevelop into something else. It's really, really smart, a time-saving uh, way to do it. Yeah, yeah, it really. Oh, yeah, it really is. I, I, one of the examples I use in the the uh, presentation I did for PubU is I talk about infographics and. Um, I'm going from exactly what you were just talking about, gathering that content and making it into an infographic, but doing it with a lot of intentionality. So if you create an infographic where you have, like the example I use is I did one for my mobile book that had like seven slides, and each slide really represented a section of the book. But it was um, um, rich with, with uh, like statistics and how to the graphics and such, and that you take those and you create this infographic, and there's tons of things that you can do with infographics, lots of micromedia the ways that you can put it up there on all these different sites. Um, SlideShare now has its own section for infographics. And then you can take that graphic and even break it down. Then now you have seven different pieces. Each one of them can be a topic for a blog post. You can actually take those seven pieces and do a little screen, um, you know, slide share with it as far as, you know, video. You make a little video out of it, make it into your book trailer, and, you know, post it, make a little shorter videos, what I like to call snippets videos, share them on Instagram and Vine and most places. So there's, there's a great opportunity there to really think about all of the content you have, how you can you know, create perhaps an infographic with it with all these great graphics and then ultimately use those for tons of content down down the line. Yeah, that's smart. That's really smart. I think that, uh, and, you know, the, also too, as a pu uh, publishers could do a, a link sharing 
um, marketing thing among their authors to put together a bunch of that micromedia for each one and everybody share each other's links and push out that content and that would be a good way to get everybody involved within that publishing um, platform you know and it creates more interest so yeah that's that's really smart good stuff good stuff um, what would you say if if I decide okay I really need to do this well what's kind of the process that I could go through what should I be doing first before and, and what can you name some tools like maybe some video editing tools or um, graphic tools that can help me out a little bit well I would say if you were to, if the very first thing that I would do in in any case is to look at the content that you already have and also look at your website because like I said early on if you want to make certain that you make your content very easy for people to share and so you're because some very interesting statistics are out there about how most people don't read an entire article before they share it so they'll read maybe the first couple of paragraphs it's like oh this is interesting I'll share it and I'm off to something else right mm -hmm. and so to make certain that on you know your blogs that you have compelling information in your very first couple of paragraphs and that you have share buttons that are easy for people to share your content and that you also have things like uh, tweetable quotes and you use tools like click to tweet is a that was one of my favorite tools you know within blog posts to make certain that people can share your micro media content very easily you know with their followers and then I would say take a look at that content and figure out you know what you know what's the best of it you know and to pull out those juicy bits as I like to call them and share them on, on these other you know micro media sites and that includes your images and includes quotes that includes factoids and links as well as um, as again make you certain that you're prepared and that you have a verified website on Pinterest that you're a YouTube partner if you're using YouTube and you know then go out because again you've got things that are trackable that people can can come back to your website from and because I don't think that you need you know especially for writers and for book publishers I don't think they need to produce a whole lot more content but if you do find yourself in a position where you don't have a lot or you don't know how to create something like an infographic then um, one great tool is called visually that's visual dot ly okay mm -hmm. and then also using uh, one of my favorite video screencasting tools is Camtasia by TechSmith very easy video editing um, software that isn't um, too feature rich so that it, it makes it a little bit more user friendly for those of us who aren't actual video producers All right the um there was something else that when you were talking to I was thinking oh um, I know that a lot of times you know I, I my backgrounds graphic design so I have all the graphic design programs but one program that I rely on a lot is uh, PicMonkey it's just a free photo editing software I actually mm -hmm. get the premium version but it's a free photo editing software that you could just pull up in your browser and throw together a graphic if you need to real quick and it makes it so much easier instead of having to open the big program and go through all that so there's a lot mm -hmm. of tools out there that can do that of course you have to be careful I mean you have to be careful what images you use and make sure that you know they're not restricted by copyrights and things like that or create mm -hmm. your own image but a lot of times you can create your own image just with uh, you know a picture of random clouds and the text mm -hmm. and change the colors or the what it, look of it a little bit and you have an image it's not necessarily that you have to find the perfect image of the little boy eating an ice cream cone on the on a beach you know I mean oh that. yeah yeah you can get sucked into oh, yeah. into eye stock photo or graphic river for hours looking for just the right image it it and that's where you know it becomes time consuming you and I were talking in the in the green room about how our it seems that our most popular content is stuff that we just threw together you know and didn't overthink whereas these these well thought out blog posts that are mapped out and you know 1400 words or you know just totally flop so you never really know what's gonna hit out there 
And so, you know, try different things. And doing this the micromedia way would, um, of course, drive content back to your website and um, the blog post or the book or whatever you're trying to uh, market at that time. But it would do it in a faster, more shareable way that people are more likely to look at that content, I would think, than if just the content, especially uh, it's something that's uh, uh, serious or highly technical, than they would if they just saw that there. I think that mm. it would really help. Yeah, right, right. Which is why things like uh, memes, image memes, and and then that sort of thing tend to get really popular because they're easy to share. You know, yeah. oh, that's cool. You know, it's it's very visual. You can see it in you know a couple nanoseconds and and share it. Well, so I, I, that mm -hmm. I used as an example a while ago in a discussion I was having with somebody um, about I read a lot of nonfiction books. You know, books like yours and. I read through them so fast because really in a nonfiction book that's explaining something probably 20-25% of the content is something that's really valuable the rest is kind of setting you up for the content you know the, mm -hmm. the fluff that you need to you know make it a book and I think that well, I've been trying to apply that to my social media actions and remember to bring it down to what that actual content is and this micromedia is a very effective way to, to do that. Yeah, yeah abs absolutely. Yeah, and for those of us who write very concisely, it you know it's definitely advantageous. And people who I think one of the problems when we talk about you know social media and producing the types of things we're talking about here is is we we tend to think in terms of nonfiction. And uh, one of the things that I like to stress when I talk about things like infographics is that they really are applicable to fiction. Because if you, th if you look at an infographic, what a great storytelling tool. Oh, sure. If you were doing you know? a, a story on, let's say, that was based in um, Italy in the 1600s, you could do a whole infographic on the history or the, mm -hmm. uh, what they ate at that time, how they dressed. I mean, there's just, it's uh, the the landscape, anything. It's an absolute wonderful tool. And I, I, you're right. I think it's underutilized for that. I think it could do, go a step further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd really encourage uh, authors, in the, you know, um, fiction authors to, to think about how you can utilize these, you know, otherwise rather techie tools, you know, as, as storytelling, you know, vehicles. Right. Charlotte and I both use Kathleen Colvin as an example all the time about that. She writes uh, books that are based in um, uh, past Roman history and she does blog posts and little things about the not only the history but how the women dressed, the different jobs they did, all different kinds of things. And that would, that's, she's using the micromedia uh, very well to do that. Right, and so those factoids are also really fun things to share and great things to share on things like Tumblr, especially if you can find a relevant image, like a vintage image or something to go along with it. Um, and the other place that I like to um, stress when I talk about micromedia are Q&A sites like Quora.com, and that would be a great place for any type of author to go in and kind of search around and poke around and, and answer questions that may have not already been answered. And it's also a great place to find topics to write about, blog posts. If people are asking a lot of questions about something and not a whole lot of people are answering those questions, well, it sure. might be a good place for you to have a blog post and then go back and answer the questions along with a link to your post. That's a very good tip. Yeah, that's absolutely a good tip. I hadn't thought of that. That would be a good way to um, get an understanding of that, where the holes are. Mm -hmm. cool. Right, right. Very really interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I'm learning still more. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're about at the end here. Um, I want to remind everybody that next week, I have to look at my card, we are going to do the secret to getting good book reviews. Charlotte will be back. I will not be here next week, so you all get a break from me. And that's a 26, and the guest is going to be Lindsay Parker. And that's going to be a very interesting show that I know a lot of uh, indie publishers and authors will be interested in. And uh, Lindsay Parker will give you a lot of information on that. Um, if you have a chance, watch uh, The Writing Biz Wednesday at 7.30 here on Google+. And you can also see it over on YouTube as a replay. And it's on a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. 
And this week we have uh, Jeff C. He's going to talk about Pinterest and other um, social media platforms. And it's the, the end show for the uh, a series on social media for writers. And Deltina, would you like to tell us what you have coming up, where people can find you, and what we can look forward to? Well, uh, right now, DeltinaU.com is the best uh, place to find out what I have going on. I just um, produced or put together a, um, a what I call a mastery of uh, digital marketing certificate on my site as well. I have over 20 courses, anywhere from you know the basics of Twitter all the way through you know search optimization, and pretty much all of those courses are included in the mastery program. Uh, but for those who don't want something quite that in depth, you know, you can take individual courses as well. That's good. It's good you offer it like that because a lot of times people find themselves. But like I was saying with the uh, Instagram, you know, you may want to just learn about one thing, and um, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. nice to have that available instead of having you know, the whole ball of wax. So that's good. That's good. I'll be. I'll use that as a resource on uh, my show and my blog post for the uh, writing biz too, because I think that. The writers over there can get a lot of information from that. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly, certainly, certainly appreciate you being here today, Deltina. It was very nice meeting you. And to everybody who's watching, uh, join us again next week when uh, Charlotte will talk about uh, book reviews with you. And I hope everybody has a great week. Thank you. Thanks, Laura.